He says, I was reflecting on my last road race and thinking of ways I could have used the course profile to my advantage better. As a new racer, I didn't really know how to use the power I had in the best way possible. Could you please spend some time covering how road races over different course profiles usually pan out or how to read the profile ahead of time? I think many people like me might think flat stage equals sprint finish, uh, uphill finish equals a climber's day. That's like the Tour de France watching. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was- going to be my first bit of advice. So. Okay, cool. He says, but there's, uh, there seems to be a lot more variability in course, pro- course profiles than just these two. For example, what's the best strategy for a given rider on a downhill finish or a lumpy race or something that would be, you know, nice and rolling. Oh. Uh, so, um, and then he says another interesting conversation might be discussing how to select a course that suits you. I feel like I hear that phrase a lot, but don't really know what it means for me as someone who isn't necessarily a true sprinter or a climber, but better at one to five minute efforts. So we'll kind of try to wrap that in. Maybe we can cover the last question first on how, how to analyze maybe, and how to figure out what, you know, race is ideal. Now, the first thing I do is I Google, I, I look up the name of the race, whatever it is. And then I'll say like GPS or, you know, whatever else you can say Strava, whatever else. And you can find a person that's mm-hmm. ridden it before. Yeah. Gone are the days. So when I started racing back in the nineties, we didn't have access to this stuff. So recon was show up early and pre-ride the course. And mm-hmm. if you didn't have access to that, you got to piece it together. You got to ask people <laughs> who have done it. Hope the course hasn't changed. If these people, you know, give you any insightful information, it, but, but it was, you know, simpler times. And yeah. as, as a result of it, you kind of had to figure it out on the fly most of the time. I, I think those tips still sit in the, they're, they're in good, they're great tips though, because you can have the GPS course profile, but there's so many times we're just looking at the course profile. You have to fill in the gaps mm-hmm. beyond that. And it's really helpful to get a person's perspective. Uh, so like the first thing I usually do is search for that course profile. I find it. Um, then a lot of the time, what I actually do is I put it into a service called best bike split, because then it gives me an idea of what, like how to pace this sort of effort roughly, assuming that it would just be a solo <clears> effort. <throat> And then at that point I start looking in, I start asking people or looking around on the internet to see if people have talked about the race and how it unfolds. a wealth of information to be. Yep. And then I kind of piece those things together and that's how I get a feel for what the race is. Um, And then, you know, it's easy to understand, you know, if it suits you or not. If you're good at one to five minute efforts, like we have in this case, you know, with Matt, you have a lot of different races that I think would fit. One to five minutes is a great range. You can do a lot with one to five minute power. When I think one to five, the only thing you're not going to be good at is if there's a 40 minute climb in it or like, you know, or like a really mass, long climb or a mass finish. No, even that, because I think if it's a, oh, no, if it's a mat, mat finish or a f- mass flat finish, yes. um, you're the one that's going to jump the sprinters. So even like Possibly. a crit, right? I mean, that's, that's your only choice, right? Right. Is, is to jump the sprinters. Yeah. And that's really, I think until you get to the upper categories, it, the speed usually of the, at least in my experience in the lower categories, I'm lucky I get to race with fast people and non sanctioned ones. And then the slower people, hmm. they don't do this huge, like 35 mile per hour train. Not a lot of you, organization. Yeah. That yeah. you can't like jump out sure. of yeah. mm-hmm. where at the lower categories, they're all like, they're not working together as well. And, uh, they're, everyone's trying to be that sprinter. So everyone wants to like mm-hmm. hold up, right. You might be going 20 or 24 or 25 right. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. can jump that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, in terms of if a course suits you, it really depends on how the pack is going to race it too. So you kind of have to know what tendencies exist in the group that you're going to race with. And if you Mm -hmm. don't know those, then you do just have to rely on the course profile and any beta you can get from people. The other thing, if you're good at one to five, I'm thinking get into a breakaway. That's another great thing you could do, especially in a lumpy course. Yeah. So, so my first bit of advice would be to, would be to watch the grand tours. I mean, you have three weeks of daily racing, say for the rest days, and you can glean something from every one of those. Mm -hmm. And what I find really interesting is that it never, it's never as, as uh, predictable as you think it is. You see, it's a flat course, you know, it's going to come down to a mass start finish. You know, the big teams are going to reel the breakaway in at the last minute. doesn't always happen. Sometimes it works out. And, And in the case of a guy with one to five minute power, you're in that early break, you make it work. Then you start attacking that break and using that power again later in the race, mm-hmm. it can, you know, the cards can fall your way. And one, some races that I really like to watch for that sort of information are the spring classics. Cause when mm. it's just one day, you tend to see more, I guess, more, more things thrown at the wall to see if they stick. Because a lot of the time in a grand tour, you know, you don't see quite as many tactics or you see like, sure, they'll let them get away and then they'll end up reeling them in or mm-hmm. they won't care about them because they're inconsequential. To but the those, GC. those are high level races too, where they mm-hmm. know exactly what they have to do in order to bring that breakdown in the nick of time. Yes. yes. It doesn't usually work that way. Not, <laughs> in, lower, not in low category <laughs> races. And, and 
So I was watching a lot of the USA Pro Crit stuff with Cliff Bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They won out of the breakaway so many times. Yeah. Like, mm. and you, and that's the highest level crit racing in the US. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And you would think that in a, in a crit, like the Peloton could pull back. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. But it and didn't happen. And that, that's criterium racing and, and races that come down to sprints, you know, flatter races. Even on the climbing races, you assume you're not a climber. That means you aren't going to ride it like a climber would ride it. Yep. You don't sit in, wait for the final climb, and then go full gas from the bottom with the rest of the climbers. Yeah. You do something different. In your case, employ a breakaway prior to the climb, yep. most likely. I mean, yeah. there are other tactics or getting in the early break, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, now getting into, I guess, some, I guess, just basic scenarios too uh, mm-hmm. that a lot of people see, like on – it really, the the one thing that you have to consider is the larger context of the race before you consider how the tactics will go. If it is within a stage race, and you should expect that typical thing that you see during Grand Tours in the sense that people will let certain people go, they may reel them in later on, but there's a greater goal. But if it's just a one day race, then you can expect kind of no holds barred in terms of, of what people will do. There aren't any like contingencies Long, in place. Longer, or bigger picture sort of stuff, yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, I notice that, so if there's a race going on in lower categories, it's a bit of a free for all. So we'll just assume it's kind of higher category stuff. And especially if you have something like a criterium, you have to know that a break will get away or try to get away very early on. That's just, that's just how things work. Um, if you have a race that I found with like a consequential climb at some point in it, some you'll, sometimes you'll see breaks go, but really the action starts in those sort of moments. So during your course recon, if there's a really big climb or really, you know, rolly climby section amongst a relatively flat section of a course, that's where you can expect things to happen. So like when it comes to tactics, I think you have to mix not only the possibilities of what a person could do on a bicycle, but you know, how that's going to interact with the terrain that is going over. Mm -hmm. And that's um, like we have one race in the Northern California region called the Winters Road Race. Actually, I don't think it's going on anymore, but it's a great road race. And it was basically through orchards and it was kind of flat and like nothing until you got to these really steep, rolly climbs. And then you do laps on that. And I think that, you know, uh, cat, you know, P12s ended up doing something like five or six laps on that. And every time you basically knew that somebody was going to try to get away. And then by the time they hit the climbs, the pack would end up usually rolling up and carrying enough speed through those rolling hills that it would be able to get close enough. And then they'd reel them in. But really the action always happened. It was almost like somebody called a truce on the rest of the course because they knew it was going to happen right there. So in terms of tactics, there's so many different things you can do. You can look at the cliff bar videos that we've done. You look at the race analysis videos we've done on YouTube and you can see different tactics being tried and how they play out. Uh, But the big thing is it always ties in to how the course, the other course profile. I want to say two comments on that. First comment is, and if you know if that's going to be your weak spot, like Mm -hmm. probably for Chad and I, that would be our weak spot Mm because relative, we're we're not as good at climbers as something like Jonathan or something is I would go in a different spot. Uh You know what I mean? Like you go in a spot just because everyone says it always happens this way. When you do something, when it doesn't happen that way, everyone goes, wait, they look at each other. (laughs) You're not supposed to do this. If you know when a race blows up every time that race takes place, well, don't go there. I mean, (laughs) just try to try to piece something else together. Something that catches people unaware. I've seen races where that happens, uh, where, I mean, these are Silly ones. Yeah. Floyd Landis when he did it. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. obviously silly. <laughs> Chris Froome too, though. Everyone's yeah. like, why would you go two and a half hours yeah. from the end? Yes. Like that Giro. seems like a silly attack. Yeah. Uh, we oh. can Fortune we can look at each other for a little bold. bit. Yeah. I mean, you have to take risks too. Yep. But yeah, in, in response to your um, selecting courses that suit you, <clears throat> this is, this goes very much in hand in hand with what we talk about uh, avoiding when you pigeonhole yourself, saying I'm not a climber, I'm not a sprinter. How do you know? I mean, certainly if you know you have particular strengths, you'll choose courses that suit those strengths. But if you can't, it doesn't mean don't do the race. It doesn't mean don't get out there and and glean some new experience because you can learn a lot about yourself as a rider. You can learn a lot of new strategy. You can learn about your opponents. I mean, there's so much other information to be gathered. I I highly recommend not avoiding uh, avoiding courses that you're not specifically suited to. And then my my second point, that's that's goes right in what I was going to say for the second one is I think a lot of people, they give up a chance to win because they don't want to get last place, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Like you, you say, I, I can survive in this race in the Peloton if I just sit in rather than attack early and then there might be a counterattack and I might get spit out mm-hmm. and get last place on the overall results. But it's so it's much better it. for you as a rider and for your overall like development to yeah. try that stuff out than to just yes. sit in the whole time. You don't. 
You don't learn. What do you you learn from finishing 30th and just kind of phoning in the finish? Yeah. I mean, take some chances. I mean, mix things up a bit. See, you know, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Yeah. So it shouldn't really, it doesn't matter that you get last place. That doesn't mean you're the slowest. Totally. And it doesn't matter if you do a shorter race distance. Yeah. Yeah. These are two things that people need to get over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think that if you're good at one to five minute efforts, you have like, you should never, yeah, you should never be saying, you know, oh no, this course is like really not for me. Even on something perhaps with a long climb, you could really throw something in there that might be able to get away. So you're pretty versatile. I think of Peter Sagan, for example, like that guy, remember the tour of California when he He was about anything, but yeah, yep. one to five minute power is certainly in his wheelhouse. Exactly right. Yep. Yeah. What's well, so, not? So basically, yeah. <laughs> so question. basically, Matt, you're Peter Sagan. So good, good news. <clears throat> if you like that video, you should subscribe to our channel. There's more where that came from. And even like the video down below with a thumbs up or leave us a comment. If you want to see race analysis videos, click right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, click over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. It works. Trust us. Just trust us. (laughs) We guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Or your money back. It's true. Take us up on it.